Hi everyone, in this video we are going to go over step-by-step -step how to create a stored procedure in SQL Server. So the last video we left off, we were speaking about inserting records into a table. We created a new table and showed how through whether a select or using values we can insert data into that table. And in this case what we're going to do is instead of having to go through, write this out and run it manually, we can create a stored procedure. And the way to do that is you go to the database, programmability, store procedure. You can see there's a bunch here, and we'll create a new one. But you can think of a stored procedure as it's an object that's going to store the code that you want to run, and you can call all the code without writing the whole thing out. You're going to store it. It's a copy of it. And you can call this in a scheduled job. You can call it by itself in another query, whatever you want. So. This comes with a template. It's going to have a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to get into the specifics of these things, but we can get rid of a lot of this. We can put our name as the author. I'll put my name, Michael Kahn, and create date today, February 5th, 2019. Tutorial stored procedure. It's a stored procedure is exactly what the name sound, sounds like. It is a stored procedure of code. Here is where we'll give it a name. And kind of like when we named a table, we need to first start it with the schema. So we'll use our same schema, demo, dot, and then the name of the procedure. We're going to call this USP update rep performance. You'll see a lot of times uh, you'll see USP in the beginning of these. That stands for user stored procedure. It's just a standard. It's a pretty well-known uh, prefix to use here. Here's where we would put parameters. We're not going to worry about that yet. We'll get to that later. I want to get to just the basics first. Uh, no account on or no count on. You can leave that. That's like it says here. It's just when you get a result, it'll give you the number of rows that were affected. But if you set this, it won't do that. And then here, everything after that is the main part that we're concerned with. This is what the actual code is going to be. So this is whatever you want. I mean, this could be a select statement and return a results set. It could be updating. It could be deleting, truncating. It could be all of those things in a row. It's whatever you want. So just as an example, let's do our, our basic query here. Or you know what, let's use, let's use this here, just the select portion, and then indent it. If we were to just run this, this is the result set. I didn't run the actual procedure, just this highlighted portion of code. But the point is, when we call this procedure, once we create this, that's what's going to return. It's going to run this code. So now let's uh, go ahead and execute, create this. It created the object, which is it created the stored record of this code that we can call whenever we want. So let's refresh here, right click, and there it is. And the way we call this, I'm going to copy this. We'll open a new tab, Control N to open a new one. And the syntax is EXEC, ex execute, and the name. So it came through here. When we call this, it came in here, read through this, ran this code, and because the output was a result set, this is what we got. So now let's say we want to actually insert it, just like we were before. So we're not just selecting, we wanted to actually insert any time we call this. So I'm going to copy this in here. So now when it comes through here, it's not just selecting. It's actually this whole thing together is inserting. There should be no result set. It should just say, you know, the number of, normally it would just say the number of records that were inserted. But because we have this, we won't even see that. It should just say, you know, success completed. Whenever, if so let's say we, we made this change and we click execute. It's going to say this already exists. And that's because we have this as create. We can't create it again because we already did. 
So we need to change this to alter, and that will indicate to SQL Server that it's just updating the code. So we can run this now, F5, and it updated it. So now, if we were to run this, what's going to happen is it's going to call this, and it's going to insert all of these records. That will get inserted into this table. But before we do this, let's just let's just take a look. Let's see what happens. what does this table look like. Okay, so there's information in here. So if you remember from last time, to clear out the table, we can truncate. So now there's nothing in there. And if we execute this, we should expect it to now insert this into it because that's what this procedure is actually doing. So let's go ahead. Command completed successfully. Again, because we have this no count on, we didn't see the number of records that were inserted that's hidden. And if we select this now, we would expect to see it. There it is. All these records are in here, in here now. Now what if we did this again? It's going to go here. It's going to insert, do the same thing again. Success, no issues here, but we look at this, it's just inserted on top of it. And because we have this auto incrementing column, there's no issues. It's just, we're doubling up. We could do it again. And we're just getting more rows, 186, 248. We're just inserting on top. But one thing we could do here, and you know, this is one of the cool things about a stored procedure is that you're able to do multiple things in one sequence in one thing that you can call. So let's say every time we want to truncate this first and then call it. So really, it would look something almost like, like this. All right, so let's, we would want it to truncate first, then insert. So each time when we would do this, it would only have the 62. What we could do is actually include that here. There's nothing saying we can't do this. So why don't we say clear table, truncate, and then insert. So let's execute. That means it added this code to it. No issues here. And now, 62, remember before when we kept running this, it kept adding on top. If we run this now, 62, run it again, multiple times, still 62. That's because every time we run it, it's truncating it first and then inserting. So the next part and really the last thing I want to touch on in terms of procedures here, uh, there's a lot to cover, but one of the, one of the other main things I want to talk about is parameters. And the way this works is if you indicate a parameter, if you remember the before it had those notes up here, you're actually able to pass in a value into this procedure that you can use anywhere. So let's say you want to say only where year is, you know, a specific year that you're, that you could indicate beforehand, you could do that here. So the way you would do that is underneath the alter, the, the naming, you, you give the parameter a name, but first using the at symbol. So let's say, let's use that example at, order year and give it the data type. So this is saying here is the potential, here is one of the parameters that is expected anytime you call this, you need to put it in here. And now, so let's just do this and see what happens. So now if we call this again, we're, it's gonna say, we expect a parameter. It, it won't run unless you put it in there. Even though we're not using it anywhere, it's it's still expecting it. So let's do 2018. This is how you do it. You put it. You literally just put it right next to it, and it and it worked. But even though we put that here, it wasn't actually used for anything, so it, it didn't actually make a difference in the code. But this is how you would you would put it in. If you had multiple parameters, it would be comma separated. If you, one of them was a was a string, you would you know. Put that string there and you put your list of parameters 
But let's say we want to use this. What we could do, we could add some more code down here. Let's say instead of just selecting all of them, let's let's have a condition here. Let's say where the order year, we'll just use this, equals order year, the parameter. So what this is saying is whatever we pass in here is going to be part of the select statement. So let's just say we, we made this 2018. What would this look like? Oh, nothing. So what? let's get some values. What do we need here? Okay, 2012. This is what would happen. It would select these and only insert these values. So let's try that. So we'll alter this procedure. So now order year is being used here. We'll set this parameter to 2012 and we'll expect it to pass this 2012 into this procedure, trim down this select statement and only insert those rows. No errors. And there we have it, 2012. Now let's say we did 2011. We're executing it. We're only seeing, when we look at the table, there's only 2011. And again, we lost the 2012 records because we're still doing that truncate. So it's coming through, it's removing the values and then inserting. So that about, that about does it for the store procedures. I know that was a lot at once. We went over the different ways to format it, to handle the uh, parameters, the different steps you could do. You, it's literally endless. It's whatever you want to do. You could have a truncate, an insert, uh, an update. So um, in the next video, we will start to explore functions and how to create those.